I'm back. <laughs> uh, today, I want to teach you how to make something called a biltong. Biltong is a form of cured meat. Um, when I'm talking to people about it, they they that never heard of it. Uh, they, they, I say it's kind of like jerky, but it's it's not it's not like jerky. It's different. It's more of a instead of a smoked meat, it's a uh, it's more of a mummified meat. And uh, I'll show you the process of it. Um, it's it's really easy, and you can use any lean meat. Uh, I use beef when it's on sale. I like to use uh, the round, the eye of round, or any any lean cut. Um, venison works very well with it, very tasty. And uh, I've got the Wikipedia open here. It is a variety of cured meat originating from South Africa, and it ranges from beef to game meats, fillet of ostrich. That sounds good. If anybody uh, sees this video and makes ostrich biltong, <laughs> let me know. And let's see, it is typically made from raw fillets of meat cut into strips. Following the grain, I cut it cross grain, either way. Uh, similar to beef jerky in that they are both spiced dry meats. That's about the only uh, comparison <laughs> to jerky I would give it and I was reading down uh, earlier it says that you can find shark biltong that sounds pretty interesting too so if you if you watch this video and you make some shark biltong <laughs> let me know all right with that uh, I'll take you through the steps in the process and uh, let's make some biltong So these are the ingredients you're going to need to make the uh, biltong. We're going to need apple cider vinegar, uh, just regular old ground black pepper, some coarse sea salt, and some coriander. And of course you're going to need some meat. You want some lean meat. You don't want a lot of the, uh, the fat. We'll be trimming all this off. Not because it's rancid or anything like that. It just turns real chewy when you uh, make this stuff. So we're going to need a, uh, a dish. To soak it or to uh, let it sit overnight, and you know, cutting board and a knife, uh, pretty typical stuff. So this, uh, let me get the meat out, and uh, we'll get going with that. All right, here's the piece of meat that we're gonna use, and you see the, the fat on it right here. We're gonna trim all this off, and as much of this off as we can. So let me trim that up, and then. Uh, show you the next one. Alright, I got all the uh, fat trimmed up right here and this is what we got left and uh, this this piece is such a big piece uh, what I'm probably gonna do I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'm gonna cut it uh, in strips. Okay once you cut in uh, you can see where the grain is just look at that grain. <laughs> Alright so since we're going to be uh, drying it and chewing on it, if you have the grain going long ways like this, it's going to be real hard to, to chew off. So I like to cut it cross grain where the grain's going this way. So that's what I'm doing right now. And this is about a good size, good size piece, about an inch by inch, a little bit more. This is going to be a good size piece. All right, it is all cut up into pieces. This is what we got, just to give you an idea. Uh, this is about the sizes that we're looking at. Big old thick pieces. This is not like jerky where we cut it thin and all that. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is get our apple cider vinegar. Uh, you can just, if you don't have a spray bottle, you can just put some on there. Just make sure it's coated. But um, I have it in this handy dandy spray bottle. And so we're just going to spray it. Alright, it is all coated with the apple cider vinegar. And now we're going to uh, coat it with the sea salt. The reason you want to use coarse sea salt is for this exact reason here. Once that stuff gets on there, it's going to start to melt. It's going to start to soak up any moisture. And you won't be able to see it. So if you use the fine salt, it goes real quick. If you use the coarse salt, then you have an easier time uh, seeing it. So, I'm going to coat these with the salt and then uh, I'm going to put a good coating on there and then I'll come back. All right, 
that's what it looks like when it's all covered with salt. You want a good layer of salt, it's very important, but you don't need to go crazy with it. Every square inch of it doesn't need to uh, be covered in salt. The salt's going to extract, extract any of the moisture, and uh, that's, a, th that's a very important part of this process. But you don't need to cake it with salt, where that's all you see, that, that's overboard and it's not going to taste good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to put on is uh, coriander. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just dust it with the coriander. At this point, anything else that we add on here is uh, it's really just for flavoring. Uh, you can put just about any flavors on here that you want. I'm not going to go overboard on the coriander. I'm going to do this side, and then I will break and go to the following side. Because what I'm doing is a uh, I'm doing one side and then I'll flip it and do the other side and then I'll make sure that all four sides are covered with the spices. So here's the coriander. Eh, I might do just a little bit more but that's a good amount. And uh, black ground pepper. Now this, you don't want to go overboard on this just unless you just want a lot of pepper on yours. I mean it's up to you. There's no recipe for this. This is the uh, traditional way of making it, and the reason that they put black pepper on it originally is to keep the flies off of it, because in South Africa, or in Africa, they uh, they hang this stuff outside in the open, and the black pepper keeps the flies off of it. So I'm going to turn these, finish up the sides, and then uh, I'll come back. Alright, that's what we got. We got the coriander, black pepper, salt, and apple cider vinegar. At this point... You can put anything else on it you want, some cayenne, pepper, garlic powder, whatever you want, whatever seasonings you got. Um, but at this point, we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the refrigerator overnight and let some of those juices extract out of there. And so uh, I will see you uh, tomorrow. It is the following morning. This is what the biltong looks like now. This is right here is all the juices that came out of it. Just sitting in the refrigerator overnight. I've taken them out, put them on a paper towel, and as you can see, it is starting to get gray. And uh, that's the mummification process. So the uh, next thing we're gonna do is hang them up in a well ventilated room. All I do is turn the ceiling fan on. Uh, I hang them up with these. I'll show you that here in a minute, and then uh, I've got this that I hook up to the, the wall, paracord, a carabiner, and a screw. I've already got a place uh, in the room that I do this in, so I'm going to hang these up, show you what that looks like, and then uh, it's just a waiting game after that. So I've got them all hanging now. You can see i got the little tack in the wall and hanging on the rod over here. Uh, you want to space them out. You see how I have them spaced out so you can get some airflow through them. And just let them hang here and dry. Uh, and mine, mine usually take between five and seven days and then they should be ready to go. Uh, it just depends on how moist you want them. The longer you let them sit, the drier they're gonna, they're gonna be and it'll continue to dry. And uh, all I did was take the paper clips and uh, bend them out, stick them through the meat, and hang it up, and that's it. So that's what it looks like hanging up. Pretty easy stuff here. It is delicious. So five to seven days and it'll be finished. So that's Biltong. So when it's all ready, I'll, I'll have some uh, delicious biltong. There is nothing like it. I absolutely love it. You can uh, eat it by itself like you would jerky. You can cut it up and put it in stew and cook with it if you want. It'll rehydrate. And, uh, man, it's just good stuff. I know I lost, <laughs> I probably lost a lot of you at the point where I hung it up in the middle of the room. And you're like, what? It's not in the refrigerator? <laughs> you're not going to die from it. It's... <laughs> It's been made for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's it's a good way to uh, preserve meat. It'll last 
it'll last almost forever. Um, you want to make sure that the moisture's out of it. I have made the mistake of making some. Uh, it wasn't dried completely, and then I vacuum packed it, and then mold got on it. And so, uh, at that point, it's it's no good. The mold will look uh, it's a kind of a white color, and uh, that stuff's no good. But if you leave it in a, a brown paper sack, a handkerchief, or somewhere where it can get airflow, it's just going to continue to dry, dry and dry and dry and dry, and that's all it does. Good stuff. So go give uh, Bill Tong a try. Uh, for those that are uh, not weak of heart, <laughs> don't aren't squeamish. <laughs> give it a shot. Let me know what uh, how it turns out for you. If you got any questions, just just uh, hit me up. And with that, have a great day.